So a few years back, I made a game, and that game was called Centroid. You are a ship defending this tiny, low-poly planet from asteroids, alien invaders, things like that. The link in the description if you want to try out. Go ahead, it's free. Go grab it. This is what we're going to make today. We are going to make one of these low-poly, tiny planets. I've got PureF open here. I'm going to leave these open just as reference. I'm going to show you how to get that low poly look first. So if I just drop in a sphere, if you look here, we can see every single face, depending upon when the light hits it and whatnot, but it's faceted. So I'm going to select my sphere. I'm going to go up to, I'm going to change this to modeling, top left corner, mesh display, and harden edge. Now that is the functionality that I'm going to do on everything. Otherwise, it looks really, really weird. Now, a default sphere is pretty boring. You'll notice I've got triangles here, and this is quads, so this isn't really going to work. What I'm going to do instead, get rid of the sphere, up to create down to polygon primitives and i'm going to do platonic solid and just click it in my channel box with this platonic solid selected i'm going to go to input click poly platonic and then i'm going to use an icosahedron that's what it's set for that's awesome i'm going to change the subdivisions you can change this slider i prefer to select the word in the channel box a middle mouse click and drag and then what i need to do is change this to triangles there we go so now we have something like this now i'm going to do that same thing i did with the sphere which is select it mesh display hard and edge and let's just take a look and see what that hardened edge is actually doing. Obviously, you can visually tell what's going on, but if I were to grab some of these faces, mesh display, soften edge, I'm going to go back into object mode and look at the difference. So all of those edges that formed those faces are now smooth. So it's just a visual representation. Everything else is faceted. This is smooth. So I'm going to grab this mesh display, hardened edge for that really cool low poly style. All right, and this is going to be my water. We'll do uh, materials later on. Next up, I need my three features. And by three features, I mean mean a tree, a rock, and just a chunk of land. So what I'm going to do, if you are super, super organized, you could go ahead and double click in your outliner. That button is here. I'm typically not, but I will this time. We're going to call this water. All right, I'm going to create our first feature, and that is one of these very simple trees. And all this is is a cube with a couple of pyramids stacked on top and then scaled down. I'm going to drop in a cube, scale it down, up, whatever. This is just the, the trunk of the tree. I'm not concerned about the scale. If we look at our water, this would be a ginormous tree. Don't care. Don't care about it right now. There's the trunk. I'm going to go to create polygon primitives pyramid. There we go. Looking great. By default, the cube comes in at a different angle. So if I wanted to rotate this, if I wanted to rotate this 45 degrees to line it up. I could. You don't have to. Totally up to you. There is the bottom of my tree. I'm going to press shift D as in delta. Scooch it up and then scale it down and then duplicate this again. And here is my tree. Let's do a rock. This one, I'm going to do a slightly different approach to my modeling. Like we look at our example here, it'd be pretty darn easy to hard surface model one of these rocks. Nothing crazy. It's super, super simple. I'm just going to show you a different approach. I'm going to drop in a sphere and I'm going to go to sculpting. And the only sculpting that I'm going to use is this grab brush. So the grab brush by default, your brush size is going to be like giant. You're going to be moving this around wondering what's going on. You can zoom out, hold the B as in Bravo, left click and drag to the left and right, increase or decrease your draw size. I am just going to throw this squish this around till I get something that's kind of nice. A little less round, just kind of blobby. Check in it from all angles. There we go. That is fantastic. Now it just looks like a, I don't know, pile of gum or something. I'm going to select this, go to mesh, reduce. And in this little box, I'm going to pull this value to the right. So 100% is not going to work. I'm just going to find something that kind of goes with that low poly style, but still kind of has the shape of that rock. There you go. Maybe something like that. There is my wonderful rock. And if I want to, I can clear my history, Alt Shift D, and then I can make my adjustments. So that's just a quick way to get going on the shape of my rock. Sweet. So with this rock selected, I'm going to do mesh display, harden all those edges. There is my low poly rock. Next up is our third feature. And I've got my water and we're going to make this a little bit different. Sure, you could box model this. I am going to select the water and then grab this magnet. This will turn this into a live surface and that allows quad draw to work. All quad draw is, is you left click and then you can place points on your mesh, hold shift, and then we have a surface um, that's following the curvature of, of our water. Let's undo that. And I'm just going to make a little land mass. Nothing too crazy. If I hold control, I can drop in an edge loop if I need it. Using middle mouse click, I can just move around. There we go. I've got this little simple shape. When I'm all done, I'm going to press Q, go to object mode, turn off live surface at the top. And now I have this object that's hugging the surface. I'm just going to press extrude, give it some thickness. Point one, look 
Okay. And then let's also offset. So let's do like 0.1. That was too much. 0.05. So now it just slightly tapers. Clear my history. Alt Shift D. And now we've got this little island chunk. So let's go ahead and name this. The nice thing about this is when you use Quadra on your water, the pivot point is in the center of my mesh. And this just so happened that my water was, you know, zero, zero, zero. That works out great. But this is the premise of how we're going to place our objects in our land. So if I press E to rotate, press Shift D, I can then rotate this around. You'll notice it's like hugging to the surface no matter where I put it. So I could move these around. I can connect these, something like that. And you could make more than one of these if you want more variation. But in this example, this is the only one that I'm going to use. Here we go. So now we have these little islands floating around. Like I said, this principle of the pivot point being in the center is how we're going to position our trees and our rocks. But before we do that, let's go ahead and dive into materials briefly. In my hypershade, this is where we're going to be. We're going to use an AI standard surface. So you can search for that here. Standard surface. That's what we're going to use. Let me show you where it's located. This is under Arnold shader AI standard surface right here. Alternatively, if you select an object, let's select the water, hold right click. Wall the way down assign new material and then we can get there this way ai standard surface in my attribute editor i can play with everything here or i could open up my hypershade and then select this ai standard surface and do it this way now when you're picking colors you're going to click the color box here there's nothing wrong with just doing this yourself grabbing the color wheel playing with the hue saturation value but a lot of times students will do something like this they'll just pick this normal blue and it's not the most appealing so what you can do is go out and find reference images Images and color swatches and things like that. And that way we can actually sample whatever image we have and then pick that color. That'll speed up our workflow, especially if you're not really good at color theory yet. Let's go ahead and sample that water. Do that. That looks good. I can also change lots of different settings. I'm using AI standard surface. It's just going to give me a lot of control. For example, if I want this to be a very shiny material, I can pull the specular roughness all the way down. And that's actually what I'm going to do for this water. It's going to look a little funky just because we have that faceted look, but that is all right. So I'm going to grab this piece of land, hold right click, go to assign new material, shader, AI standard surface, pop over here and let's change the base color. Same song, second verse. There we go. Now that looks like a little bit laser green because that was like the highlights of this let's try that again there we go that's a little bit more natural and then i can just grab all of these by holding shift left clicking hold right click assign existing material and this was ai standard surface three let's go ahead and do the same thing for the rock let's add a new material same thing ai standard surface we're gonna grab that gray i think i'm gonna go a little darker now let's set this up. So this pivot point is not great. So if I were to move this while it is in the center, as soon as I move this like to the top or something, we've got a problem here. Let's fix that pivot point. Press R to scale. We're going to make that rock roughly the size that we would like. That looks good to me. Next up, I'm going to press space bar to get to my four views. And you can click that right here on the left. The only thing that I'm going to do is hold D as in Delta. So I have my move tool out, hold D as in Delta. That way I can move the pivot point. My goal here is to position this roughly in the center. If you want to be exact, you could snap to the grid. So I have this rock kind of hovering just because I know that the land mass is hovering. Like if I were to put it here, then it's going to be inside that land when I place this rock. So I'm going to do something like that. Well, D is in Delta. Let's go ahead and move this. So it's in the center in this view, center in this view, center in this view. Shift D, I can rotate this around and then place these rocks wherever I want on my little land mass. So let's do two of them here. There we go. So I can just populate very quickly this scene. Now, if I want to have like individual control of this rock, because we modeled all sides of this rock, I can go to modeling toolkit. I can go up here, press this button, center pivot or modify center pivot. And then this one is no longer centered on the planet. That's just going to allow me to make some fine tune adjustments very quickly. Maybe like I want that rock to look like that. So a little bit more variation. Let's go ahead and take a look at that tree. So my tree is ginormous, but before we combine, this tree let's go ahead and change the color so let's grab the trunk hold right click assign new material we've done this a thousand times already let's go ahead and sample that brown I guess for this one, so this diffuse roughness is set to a low value. So this is going to be very shiny. You can kind of see the example there. 
in our attribute editor, we have a better idea of what that's going to look like. Like there's the water, diffuse roughness. All the way to one is a very matte material. It's very rough. All the way to zero, it's very shiny. So I just want to make sure my land that the roughness is less shiny. And the rock, depending upon the style that you're going for, less shiny. I don't care about this value. You could just crank it all the way. Same thing here. We don't want a shiny tree. Next up, let's get our green. Sign a new material. Shader. AI standard surface. Go ahead and do the roughness now. Sample that green. There we go. Let's grab both of those. Sign existing material. So now that my tree is created, I'm going to left click and drag to grab all of those. Modeling toolkit combine. Anytime I combine, I press Alt Shift D as in Delta. R to scale, just like we did the rock. We are going to position this tree roughly on the surface and then scale it down to however large we think this tree should. That'll be great. I already have this rock kind of as a guide of how high I would like it. Looks awesome. Press spacebar. Let's go ahead and change the pivot point. Hold D as in Delta. I'm just eyeballing it to the center of this view. Should be centered in this view. And we are good to go. Let's go ahead and duplicate this tree around. There's one, two trees on that one. There we go. So you get the idea. I would need to reposition these or just delete these main ones. Move them around. Things are looking great.